Here is the story of a sea captain known as the Sea Wolf for the good and the devil for the bad ones. Despite his remarkable victories, Thomas Cochrane was among the most underrated naval heroes. In this video, let's find out why he is known as the craziest and single most daring commander ever. A vast and renowned maritime legacy exists in Great Britain. They ruled the open sea from the 16th through the 19th century. They had the largest fleet of ships at their disposal. One of the capable British maritime commanders was Thomas Cochrane. He was the son of a Scottish aristocrat and came from prestigious military family background. Thomas was born on December 14, 1775 in Ansfield, South Lancashire. He spent many of his early years exploring the family's estate at Culrus Fife. Thomas successfully accumulated many naval accomplishments in the maritime campaigns throughout the Napoleonic Wars between 1803 and 1815. According to sources, Cochrane possessed an unwavering enthusiasm and tenacity, but a total lack of discretion. Not only that, but he was very stubborn, never respected his superiors, and was frequently criticized by them. He was disliked by many of his superiors in the Royal Navy. He also broke all the rules as a ship commander in the Navy. He always used unorthodox, careless, and bold tactics in his missions. But despite this, he had great success in naval combat. He used the ideal combination of precisely prepared campaigns and his firm and determined thinking. This strategy appeared effective and the enemies were startled into inaction or errors. During the Napoleonic Wars, he was one of the most daring captains. He was known as the Sea Wolf by the French, yet disagreements marked his stint in the Navy. Conflicts with people he had alliances with, as well as his superiors, subordinates, and equals. Cochrane was tried by a court-martial for insulting his superior, which set off a chain of events. He was found not guilty, but was punished for his arrogance. When the French Revolutionary War began in 1793, Thomas, being just 17 years old, joined the Royal Navy. On the HMS Hind, he started his career working with his uncle, Captain Alexander Cochrane. Did you know that since he was five years old, Cochrane has been classified as a crewman aboard naval vessels? This was a common, unlawful strategy used to document the extensive service required to become an officer in those days. He enjoyed using a different flag on his ship to deceive the enemy. They wouldn't discover this disguise until it was too late. Having a small ship didn't stop him from winning the wars. With this, he managed to destroy more than 50 larger and more potent enemy ships. Thomas enjoyed using bluffs during the war. He made it seem as if his crew had a plague to terrify his enemies, and often he and his army were successful in escaping or attacking in disguise. He chopped down masts to give the impression that he had more troops on board. His preferred strategy was to attack opposing ships at night. He combined tiny canoe explosives with fire ships. Both his friends and enemies respected him. The French called him the Sea Wolf, and the Spaniards called him a devil. Here are a few examples of his out-of-the-box thinking that paved the path for his accomplishments. In 1800, he embarked on a voyage aboard HMS Speedy while serving in his brand new capacity as commander. He narrowly avoided being captured. Another such instance was when he once evaded detection by flying a Danish flag on his ship, posing as a commercial ship, and stating that the boat could not be searched because it was plague-infected. The second such tactic used by him was surely a masterstroke. Being pursued by the enemy at night as they follow the HMS Speedy's light, Cochrane tossed a barrel with a candle attached, which the opposing ship followed instead letting the HMS Speedy go discreetly. His bold and fearless capture of the Spanish ship El Gamo is one of his most illustrious achievements. Cochrane could get the Speedy so close to this Spanish ship by flying an American flag that they could not aim their cannons at them. The only alternative left to the Spanish was to board their rival's ship. 
However, Cochrane tormented them by reversing course just as they stretched out and aimed at those who were making an effort to board. Despite being much outnumbered, Cochrane and his men managed to board the Elgamo and capture her. He was, nonetheless, quite successful in marine warfare since he carefully planned and carried out every action to reduce the number of casualties. Hats off to Thomas Cochrane. Cochrane ran for the Honiton Borough seat in the House of Commons in 1806. He advocated for legislative reform, and Cochrane opposed voter bribing, which was common in this borough. He lost the first election, but he won the second one. He worked with other radicals like Sir Francis Burday to promote legislative reforms. He made many enemies because he publicly attacked the British government's handling of the war and the corruption in the Navy. Overzealous protection of Burday cost him many supporters. Cochrane helped Burday after he had locked himself inside his home to avoid being arrested by the House of Commons. When Burday saw what Cochrane had in mind, he politely moved to end the siege. Cochrane was charged with conspiring in the Great Stock Exchange fraud of 1814 and found guilty of fabricating a story about Napoleon's defeat which increased the value of government bonds. Cochrane participated in the following inquiry, selling a huge number of government bonds on the same day. Cochrane was found guilty and given a one-year jail term, public pilfering, and a loss of his naval rank. Later, the pillory was abandoned because of the concerns of Cochrane's followers rising up in insurrection. He never relinquished his right to establish his innocence. Later in 1832, he was reinstated in the Navy, and in 1847, Queen Victoria restored his knighthood. Cochrane departed for South America from Britain before having his name cleared. He oversaw the Chilean Navy's efforts to secede from Spain in 1818. He soon assisted in Peru's independence from Spain. Brazil and its struggle for independence from Portugal came next in 1824. With just three little ships, Cochrane famously followed the Portuguese fleet across the Atlantic, capturing seven enemy ships in the process. He supported all these countries as he wanted freedom, but they became dictators. Even worse, they did not pay him or his guys for their service. In typical Cochrane form, he pillaged Brazilian, Chilean, and Peruvian ships to get the money he was owed. Nothing more, nothing less. He was hired a year later to try to free the Greeks from the Ottoman Empire, but he had little success. To free Greece from the Ottoman Empire, Cochrane traveled back to Europe. For the first time ever, Cochrane failed to have much of an impact because the Greek sailors lacked discipline. He supported steam-powered engines in his final years and passed away at 85 after enjoying a long life. True badass Thomas Cochran was. His amazing feats and unwavering courage still serve as an example for others today. This was the life of the craziest sea captain of all time, Thomas Cochran. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, check out other historical videos on our channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon so you don't miss out on such interesting topics.